So your USM Elite is rapidly approaching. You've been doing practice questions for months now, but your scores just aren't improving. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why your scores aren't improving using my three-step approach. Knowledge, approach, and learning. And I'm gonna give you actionable advice about how you could improve your UWorld scores. By the way, if you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm now an international medical graduate and I make videos about my ING journey. So the short answer is, scoring low world UWorld isn't necessarily a bad thing. But as we always say on this channel, UWorld should be used as a learning resource, not an assessment tool. But there are some things that you could be doing that could be holding back your scores. So the first part of the method is poor fund of knowledge. Number one biggest reason people score low on UWorld is they have a low base level of knowledge when they finish their medical studies. The first thing you can do to assess yourself to really get an idea of where you're at is to take a practice NBME test. So just go to the NBME website and pick any test you want and go into it with the mindset of, this is gonna go very badly. Don't expect anything from the test and use that score to say, okay, this is how much I need to improve by. I get a lot of comments in the description from you guys saying, what should I do if I graduate from medical school? I have a very poor base level of knowledge. Should I start UWorld? And the answer I would say to that is, UWorld is probably going to be too challenging for you. It's good to start doing practice questions as early as possible. So what I recommend is people step down from UWorld to an easier QBank. And the one that I recommend is USM Elite RX. USM Elite RX is a fantastic service that I personally used and it basically has a video library that correlates with the passages in the USMLE first aid, which correlates also with Anki. So you could use all of these resources together. So what I would do is I would watch the lecture in class. I would go home and let's say watch the video on cardiac pharmacology. Then I would answer the practice questions to solidify my knowledge. And then I would go to Anki and try and remember, review what I had studied. So it's really nice because USMLE RX is kind of an easier QBank than UWorld. It's designed to be an introduction to practice questions. So it's it's very accommodating to people who are trying to learn with practice questions. It might be that even if you have the knowledge to answer the question, you just don't have a structured approach to actually get to the final answer. So in terms of strategy, in order to get the most out of your question bank, you really need to be doing the following four steps to really get the most out of your practice questions. The first one is, Whenever you're approaching a question, really make sure that you read the entire question stem. It sounds obvious, but people tend to skip over details. When you're reading the question stem, try and highlight pieces of important information that you think will lead to the answer. It sounds silly, but when you go to answer the question, you will focus on the information that you highlighted in the question stem and you'll kind of ignore the rest. This will come with practice. I think it was the Ang King that said something really interesting. He said, if you manage to highlight the right information in the question stem, you will get the right answer. Once you develop the ability to kind of highlight the right information in the question stem, you will start to succeed more consistently. The number two thing you need to do is find out what is the concept that this question is testing me on? Is it a discrete fact like a step in oxidative phosphorylation or is it a concept like a type of apoptosis? Really try and work out, okay, what are the examiners asking me here? Number three is you really have to read all of the answer choices. And the first thing you need to do is eliminate the answers that you absolutely know are not correct. Once you get those down, usually you should be able to get it to a one in three or a one in path. That gives you a really good chance to rule out options and improve your chances. Then you need to start ruling out the other answers. So you've eliminated the obviously incorrect ones. If you have questions that you're not sure if they're incorrect and you have, you know, logic either way, don't eliminate them. Keep them on the table and then when you're trying to work out the right answer, you'll have to deliberate between the final three, let's say. In part two of this series, which is coming next week, I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how to get the right answer, even if you don't have the knowledge to answer the question correctly. So get subscribed, because you won't wanna miss it. There's a lot of debate around timed versus non-timed and tutorial, non-tutorial. I have always felt that you have to do timed QBanks. In the beginning, if you're quite far out, you're just starting, let's say you start with USMLE RX, I think it's okay to do tutorial mode. 
and you can do it by system. As soon as possible, you really want to start moving into random non-tutorial mode. The reason why is essentially you just want to simulate what it's going to be like in the real thing. And the earlier you get used to the real test conditions, the better it's going to be for you. Mindset is also extremely important for the USMLE. It's kind of like a marathon where you know, training is very important, it's about 50%, but the mindset is the other 50% that actually gets you over the finish line. It's really important to keep a growth mindset. So what do we mean by that? It can be very disheartening to consistently receive 30% on your cue bags. If you've got 30% over and over and over and over and over again, someone with a deterministic mindset would look at that and go, Oh God, I'm so terrible, I'm so stupid, I'm never going to pass the USMLE. And that's just not constructive. And often, you know, that leads to people feeling worse about the situation and it doesn't help. You need to say to yourself, every question that I'm answering is an opportunity to learn something new. And I'm growing every time I do get those 30% answer blocks. So that's just the difference between a deterministic mindset and a growth mindset. The other thing I do is, it sounds silly, but you just gotta try and stay interested. You guys are studying medicine because you're interested in the human body. It can be easy to forget that, but I think it's really important to say, do you know what, this is gonna be fun. I tell myself before I do the practice question, I say, this is gonna be fun. Hopefully I'm gonna learn something new about the human body that I didn't know before. I try and reframe it in my head from, I have to do another cube question block to I get to do another question block. These are just some kind of hacks that you can use, you know, when you're in the depths of dedicated and you need to improve your motivation. So another thing you have to ask yourself is, how do you actually learn from the questions that you've answered? As we always like to say on this channel, UWorld is a learning resource, not an assessment tool. It sounds basic, but for every single question, we have to understand why we got the question wrong and then review that concept so we never forget it. In terms of understanding why we got a question wrong, this is really important. For each question, we kind of do a three-step approach. Number one is you have to understand why the correct answer was right, but also why the other answers were wrong. A lot of people just focus on the right answer. Oh, I got this right because of this. But you also have to go, okay, did I get it right for the right reason? It sounds very thorough and it is. I took about an hour to answer 40 questions, but then I would usually take three hours to review that question block. I really felt like I needed to personally understand each and every single question. And that worked out really well for me. So if you're taking lots of time to review your question blocks, just know it's normal. It has to be an active process of understanding as opposed to just you know, reading the correct answer. And, oh, that's nice. <laughs> the second thing you have to do is try and categorize what went wrong. Was it a knowledge problem? Was it silly mistake? Was it question technique problem? If it's a knowledge issue, then we have to implement what I like to call the spiral learning method. So what's the spiral learning method? If you have a knowledge gap, when you see the knowledge gap in your question bank, you go back to your notes and you review that topic. Let's say you got a question wrong about antiarrhythmics. I would go back to the section in first aid and I would reread the page in first aid or I would watch the sketchy video and then I would probably unsuspend the cars in Anki and usually I would add the filtered tag to the tags in Anki. That worked really well for me. Let's say you get an antiarrhythmics question wrong. You have to resist the urge to go back and study all of cardiac pharmacology. It can be very easy to start freezing out and going, oh my God, I know nothing about pharmacology, but you just have to be very focused with your revision. If you get an antiarrhythmics question wrong, review the antiarrhythmics, not everything. And the idea would be to extract one sentence from the question that you would need to never get that wrong that question wrong again in the future. In terms of reviewing the incorrect answers and repeating the review, there are a few things you can do. I, I knew someone who wrote all of their incorrects into a notebook and they took this notebook around everywhere with them. And whenever they had a spare moment, they would open the book and they would read all of their incorrects. So it's like a very high yield source of information. You know, if they were on the toilet, they would just open the book. So that is that a spaced repetition, which is really important when you're remembering something. 
For me, it was really important to save time and also automate the process. So Anki worked really, really well for me. What I would do is when I got the question wrong, I would try and distill the information down to a sentence. This sentence would help me not get that specific question wrong again in the future. And then I would either make a new card or unsuspend a card in Anki and then hopefully review that and I wouldn't get the question wrong again in the future because I'm constantly reviewing the information. Another thing about Anki that I like is that you can draw tables and take a picture and insert it into Anki or I can take a picture of a first aid table or a UWorld table and I can put it into my Anki cards and I review the UWorld table very often. I made a step-by-step -step guide on how to use Anki with your incorrects. If you want to check that out, you can check a link in the description below the like button. I'm really proud of that video. I think it's really clear. It's a step-by-step -step guide, so check it out if you guys are interested. If you guys want to support the channel, you can now buy me a coffee down below. It's kind of a service where you can send me a once-off coffee to support my crippling coffee addiction. And I'm also offering tutorial services, so if you guys want more in-depth one-on-one advice with me, then that option's available for you. But all of that information is available for free on my YouTube channel. It's just for people who need a little bit more help. I'll see you guys all later. Cheers.